this is 819 and we have the circuit and we're looking to find the voltage right here at T is greater than zero. So at T is equal to zero, this opens up. So what we have, let's examine T at zero minus first, right before this opens up. And we have a voltage source, 120 volts. And we have a resistor and that is 10 ohms. And then over here at T equals zero minus, this acts like a short circuit and then this acts like an open circuit. So if we have here, we will have I, I times L, that's the current through this inductor. Now in parallel with that, we have this capacitor. So we can write this as plus, and that is the voltage here. So this is at uh, T equals zero minus. Now we can figure out the voltage across the capacitor here. If we say that this is ground, the voltage across the capacitor is zero if that's a short circuit. So the voltage at zero minus is zero, and since it's a capacitor, we know that that is equal to zero plus. So that describes the voltage. Now IL, IL, at zero minus is going to be equal to 120 volts divided by 10 ohms because all the current's coming this way. We have 120 divided by 10, which is 12 amps. And we know for an inductor that it must be continuous, continuous. So we have that I L zero plus that is equal there. Now let's go and take a look at examining the circuit when T is equal to zero plus. Now when T is equal to zero plus, this is open. So we only have this, this part of the circuit. We only have this part. So what we have looks something like this. We have our inductor, which uh, is four Henry. And then we have our capacitor over here, and that is one farad. And this is our voltage. And our current going through, this is in series, we have our current IL here. Now we know IL or zero plus, we just found that, that's 12 amps here. 12 amps. And we know the voltage across our capacitor for zero plus, we found that as well, that is zero. Now let's take a look at finding the voltage across our, what is the voltage across our inductor, VL? What's the voltage across there? Well, remember VL is equal to L di dt. Okay. And so we can say VL at zero plus is equal to L di at zero plus dt. Well, if we do KVL, the voltage VL must equal V, must equal V. VL must equal V. So this is equal to our voltage at zero plus, which is zero volts. So we have zero equals L, which is four, DI DT at zero plus. So what we find through this we find di dt at zero plus is equal to zero. So we need, to solve this, we need this boundary condition, or this initial condition, we need this initial condition, and then we also need this initial condition. 
So we need these two things to solve this problem. So we are trying to find the voltage as a function of time. This is what we're trying to find. But we're going to first try to find the current. So this is our goal. This is what we want to find. But let's first talk about the current because what we have here, what we have here is an, uh, well, it's an RLC circuit, but it's just an LC circuit. We have a source free source free series RLC circuit, but there's no resistor. R is equal to zero. Okay, so there's no R in this circuit. So the two things we need to compute to find the current are alpha. Alpha is equal to, let's take a look, make sure we get this right. Alpha is equal to R over 2L. And since R is equal to zero in this circuit, that is equal to zero. And then in addition to that, we have the resonant frequency, which is equal to one over LC. And that is equal to one over the square root of L times C, four times one. So that is equal to one half. So we have the case where omega is greater, or let's just write it this way, alpha, alpha is less than omega naught. Okay, so if we double check that, we have the case, we have an underdamped case, underdamped. That is underdamped. And if we go to the underdamped section, we can find that we have I of T is equal to E to the negative alpha T times B1 cosine omega D, that's the damped frequency times T, plus B2 sine of omega d times t. So this is our equation for the current. And we know alpha is zero. So this value here is one. That becomes one. And we're only left with these terms. And omega d is equal, omega d is equal to the equation, let me find that, um, the square root of, the square root of omega naught squared minus alpha squared. We have this equation and we know alpha is zero, so that is just equal to omega naught here in this case. Okay, so we have the current the current is comes out to be I of T is equal to B1 cosine omega D, which is omega naught, which is 0.5 times T plus B2 sine of 0.5 times T. So now we need to figure out what B1 and B2 are. Well, going back to our initial conditions, we know that I of zero is 12 amps, 12 amps, which is 12, which is going to equal, uh, so this term here, cosine of zero is one, so we have B1, and this term becomes zero. The sine of zero is zero. So we have 12 equals B1. Now let's take a look at our second boundary condition. We know dI dt at zero is zero. So if we take 
the derivative, we're gonna take, we're gonna take the derivative of this function. And if we do that, we come out with the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So that is negative 0.5, because we have that, we bring that out front, negative 0.5 B1 sine of 0.5 T plus 0.5 B2 cosine of 0.5 T. All right, so that is our derivative. And we know that the di dt at zero plus is equal to zero. So subbing in here, that is then this whole term is zero. And this term is one, so zero equals 0.5 b2. And so that concludes B2 is equal to zero. So now we have B1 and B2, and we can sub that into our equation for the current. Right? So I of T is equal to just B1, which is 12 cosine 0.5 times T. Now, this is good, but we wanna find the voltage as a function of T. So to find this voltage, what we need to know, this voltage here is equal to the voltage here. Right, so the voltage across the inductor must equal the voltage across the capacitor. Right? So if we do this KVL, KVL, we have, we have the voltage across the inductor, VL, plus the voltage across the capacitor, which we are just calling V, is equal to zero. Okay. So uh, VL must equal negative V. Okay, so this is what we have here, right? Negative V or we can write this as V is equal to negative VL. And we know VL, VL, because it's an inductor, that is negative L times DI DT is going to be the voltage, L DI DT. Okay, so let's go down. And this voltage here is going to be equal to negative L di dt okay so going over di dt is equal to if we take the derivative here we have negative six sine of 0.5 t negative six times, okay. So this value here, we have L, which is negative, it's, this is four Henry, and then we multiply that by di dt, which is negative six sine point, point 0.5 T. And then that comes out to be 24 sine of point 0.5 T. And that is our solution for the voltage across the capacitor in this problem.